Welcome to FX Options University, recorded live at the International Securities Exchange, the world's largest equity options exchange. Join the industry's top trading professionals as they provide insight and strategies for trading in the currency markets using FX options. FX options are a low-risk alternative to hedging currency moves in any market condition. So because the longer-term calls are more valuable to you and to every rational trader, they have more value. So the March of 2011 calls will be worth more, much more, than the April 2010 calls. Okay, now if you've kind of tooled around in the option chain a little bit, you figured that out already. But what you might not have thought about is that if there's 25 days until expiration today, well, there's 24 days tomorrow. And so there's one less day of usefulness in the life of that option. Therefore, they ought to get just a teeny bit cheaper. And they do. All I'll tell constant. Every day that passes, options lose value. All else held constant. Now, they might make or lose based on the delta if the underlying currency moves, but they still lose value based on time. And how we measure this change is with theta. Theta is the rate of change of an option price given a change in the time to expiration. So we have theta in option chains as well. Now, the key to understanding these numbers is, you know, just understanding the definitions, like I said. And, um, you know, our last question pointed out how, you know, it can get a little tricky. Delta is a percentage of the movement of the underlying. Gamma is basically how many deltas it changes by. Theta, now what's this? It says negative 0 0.0371. Well, it's not a percent, and it doesn't really have anything to do with deltas. Thetas are stated in dollars and cents. So what that is is 3.71 cents. 3.71 cents a day that that option loses in value. So today, if the options are 180 bid, Tomorrow, we'd anticipate those options being about 176 bid, you know, about four cents. We'd have to round here because options don't trade in tenths of a cent. <clears throat> and then the next day, it'll be worth another about four cents less, down to a buck 72. <clears throat> and every day that passes, our option loses value by the theta. Now, specifically, I'm saying the option loses value. The trader may or may not be losing value. It depends if you are long or short the call. If you're long the call, you sure don't want it to lose value. When you own things, you want it to become worth more. But when you short things, you want it to become worth less. So if you own this call, you're losing about four cents a day. And if you're short the call, you're making about four cents a day. Now, why the heck would anybody ever want to buy an option? Well, there's a lot of people who are smiling to themselves right now saying, yeah, that's right, why would anybody want to buy an option? And, you know, th there's something to that, but there is some justification to buying an option, though. When, when you're really looking for a pretty good move in a pretty short period of time, there's no leverage out there like it. You're paying for that leverage. And if you're only going to hold the option for a short period of time, Theta is not that big of an enemy to you. But before, when I was talking about P&L diagrams or at expiration diagrams, you know, if you're going to buy this call and hold it till expiration, theta wreaks havoc every single day you hold that option. And by the time the option expires, there's no time value left. The only way you can make money is if the currency rises far enough to cover all the theta decay over the next 25 days. Yuck. That's no way to make money. So, you know, really, when you're buying options, they're, they're, they tend to be shorter-term plays, and they tend to be plays looking for some pretty good volatility. Now, you know, I'm just talking about outrights. I mean, there's spreads and everything as well that, uh, 
you know, I, I, I talk to, to my intermediates and, and more advanced students. But, you know, there's, there's, there's a big difference between buying and selling options, and a big part of that is theta, and the other big part of that is gamma. There's always this sort of inherent trade-off between gamma and theta. When I buy options, I get positive gamma, and that's good for me. But I get negative theta, and that's bad for me. When I sell options, I get negative gamma, and that stinks. But I get positive theta, so that kind of you know, compensates me for that detriment. <clears throat> All right, so now the next Greek that is really important and often misunderstood and often misrepresented and ignored is vega. Vega is volatility. Vega is, and we're going to have a slide on this in just a second, but let me steal my own thunder here for a second. Vega is the rate of change of an option price based on a change in the volatility of the under, of well, the implied volatility. Now, there's two different types of volatility. There's historical volatility, and that's the volatility of the underlying stock, future, or currency during a recent time period. And that's stated in terms of annualized standard deviation. Now, that's kind of a, a little bit of a mouthful here. <clears throat> really, all it is is a, a fancy way of saying it measures how volatile that underlying currency has been over the past, you know, probably 30 days. And then we take that 30 days to represent a whole year by annualizing it. An option with a 40 historical volatility, or excuse me, a currency with a, say a, well, for currencies, the volatility is a little lower. Say a currency with, say, a 25 historical volatility is much more volatile than a currency with, say, a 10 volatility. The one with the 25 historical volatility moves more, has bigger oscillations, bigger daily price swings than a currency with a 10 historical volatility. Okay, simple enough, fair enough. What about implied volatility? You've probably heard that word being tossed around here and there in seminars or with some of your option trading friends. Well, implied volatility is, the is here. well, you know, I've got a definition here, and this is, a pretty good definition, but I want to give you more than one. Let's start here, though. Implied volatility is the market's estimate of the future volatility of the underlying currency, in this case, implied by its option prices. Okay. Now think about options. and Think about why you might buy an option. You know, maybe if you're holding currencies, you might buy a put to, to hedge to protect yourself. Options can be used as, as veritable insurance policies. <clears throat> now, if you're looking at a currency and, you know, it's just not very volatile and you're not too worried about it moving, you're probably not going to buy that insurance. But if you're looking at a currency and things are really heating up and it's been pretty volatile and you're really afraid of a big volatile downward swing, then you're pretty inclined to buy puts to protect yourself. That, that creation of demand makes them more expensive. Now, you know, I'm kind of speaking in subjective terms, but, you know, option traders can be pretty clever and pretty scientific about this. And the way they would look at it is they would say, well, the historical volatility right now is, say, 10 I'm afraid that volatility could increase to, like, 20. So if I can buy options for cheaper than a 20 volatility, I'm buying value. Thank you for participating in this week's session. Please join us again next week. Get trading ideas, exchange rates, webinars, news, and commentary. Visit www.fxoptions.com. ISE FX options can be easily traded through all options-enabled brokerage accounts. These exchange-listed securities are cash-settled in U.S. dollars and have a European-style exercise.